Hello, everyone. My name is Gabriel de Paiva Silva. I'm an undergraduate mechanical engineering student at the University of Brasilia. And I'd like to present the work that I did together with my two professors, Márcio Bassi da Silva from the Federal University of Uberlândia and Débora de Oliveira from the University of Brasilia. The title of our work is The Influence of the Burry Methods in Microslots of Inconel 718. I'd like to start this presentation by showing the motivation, then the objective. After that, I'll explain the experimental procedure, then the results, and finally, the conclusions. Starting with the motivation, I'd like to speak a little about micromilling. Micromachining processes in general have gained prominence over the last few years because there are high demands in the market for the fabrication of very small mechanical components. My, and micro milling is one of the principal micro machining processes used nowadays. Micro milling does not have one single definition yet. However, many authors agree that it can be defined by the diameter of the cutting tool, which should range from one micrometer to a thousand micrometers. Micro milling cannot be analyzed as a simple reduction of macro scale milling because in macro scale milling or in conventional milling, the cutting tool is considered perfectly sharp. But in micro milling, on the other hand, it is not because in micro milling, the size of the cutting edge radius of the tool is comparable to the minimum chip thickness and even to the grain size of the material that is being cut. And this phenomenon is called size effect the size effect causes an intense plowing effect because a large amount of material needs to be deformed plastically in order for a small amount of material to be removed in the form of burrs, sorry, in the form of chips. And this generates relatively large burrs. Talking a little about the material that is being study, studied in this work, Inconel 718 is one of the most used nickel superalloys. It has excellent mechanical properties However, uh, it is a very hard to cut material and it is known for its low machinability and it often exhibits very large burrs when micromilled. These burrs in micromilling, they are undesirable because they may affect the performance, the safety, the cost, and the appearance of the final product. Burrs in micromilling are very difficult to be avoided or removed because the burring techniques often used in, my, in, in macro scale, they may not provide the necessary precision needed in micro scale. Uh, and another characteristic of burrs in micro milling is that they may interfere in the indirect measurement of the tool wear, because in micro slots obtained by micro milling, it is possible to indirectly measure the wear of the tool by measuring the width of the, of the slot. However, the presence, of, the presence of burrs may cause imprecisions in this measurement. So according to this motivation, the objective of this work is to deburr slots obtained by micromilling on Inconel 718 samples in order to evaluate the effectiveness of the chosen deburring method. For this experimental procedure, micromilling trials were conducted uh, four samples with the dimensions in millimeters shown in the picture were manufactured. In each sample, uh, 12 slots were made. The slots were made uh, with a micro end mill from Mitsubishi made of cemented carbide and coated with aluminum and titanium nitride with two flutes and diameter of 400 micrometers. Uh, the cutting fluid used was the Cool Love 2210EP by Unist, which was applied at a flow rate of 270 millimeters per hour, uh, sorry, milliliters per hour at 200 pulses per minute and at an air pressure of 33 PSI. The cutting parameters uh, are shown here in this table. Sample three is a replica of sample one and sample four is a replica of sample two. So sample three and sample one were machined with a spindle speed of 11,000 rotations per minute and sample four and sample two with 20,000 rota rotations per minute. 
after the samples were uh, machined, they were deburred. For the deburring trials, this machine shown in the picture was used, and the abrasive deburring method was selected. This method was selected because of its low cost, because it's also a very simple method and it's very versatile. And it's used in many industries throughout the world. So silicon carbides and paper sheets were used with different mesh sizes. And this machine, the Pantec Metallurgical Polishing Machine, Polypan U, was used with a constant rotation of 120 rotations per minute. The sanding time was also kept constant for all the, the, the samples, and each sample was the bird with a different mesh size, as it can be seen here in this table. Uh, the Confocal Laser Scanning Microscope Olympus Lex OLS 4100 was used to measure the, the bird heights. This microscope is shown here in the picture. The bird heights were measured three times for each microscopy image, and the microscopy operations were conducted twice, once before and once after the deburring trials. The microscopy images were also taken to analyze uh, the samples qualitatively. And here are some of the results used to exemplify. It's possible to see in the pictures, in the graphics, that the burrs in the up milling side were bigger than in the down milling side. And it's possible to see a significant reduction in the burr heights for all samples after the burring. Uh, considering all the slots, the, the average reduction was approximately 98%. And for some slots, the, the burrs were even completely removed, as in the slot number one for sample one after the burring. It's possible to see high standard deviations due to the ir irregularities in the burst. And here in this picture, it's possible to see uh, that the different mesh sizes did not affect the surface quality of, the, of these locks. And it, it's also possible to see the reduction of the burst before and after the debris trials. So the conclusion that the conclusions that could be drawn in this work is that there was little interference of the cutting velocity in the bar heights, which indicates that other cutting parameters should be studied to better understand the bar reduction. The irregularities in the burrs led to high standard deviations, which is a characteristic of burrs in micromilling. Uh, the different sandpaper mesh sizes did not influence the surface quality of the slots. And even though the abrasive method is very uh, simple, very versatile, and has a very low cost, even so, it was very efficient to promote burr reduction. Uh, so it shown, it, it shown to be an efficient method for removing burrs in micromilled surfaces, uh, or in, in surfaces obtained by micromilling in flat surfaces. So I'd like to say thank you to CAPES, to CNBQ, to the University of Brasilia, and to FAPEMI for su supporting this uh, research project. And if anybody has any questions or would like to know any further information about this work, please feel free to contact me through my email. It's dpaivagabriel at gmail.com. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much for the attention. And I finish my, my presentation here.